Guys, let's move on to topic number two. And it's kind of related to uh, St. Louis and kind of a good transition to what we will see this weekend. The Apex shows, right? Clearly, the crowd, at least in my opinion, made a big difference in the results, in the knockouts, in, in just everything. I mean, how Joaquin Buckley came across, right? I mean, just seeing the public really react to him makes you realize, wow, this guy's a superstar. This guy's beloved. And, and it certainly bolsters his status, in my opinion. I don't know if you guys re noticed that, but was this the maybe the most abrupt or like the biggest uh, difference that we've seen between the Epic shows and, and, and a show? I know there's also pay-per-views involved and whatnot, but I feel like it, with this specific show, we really got to see the difference between the Apex and when they're on the road, the UFC. Yeah, I mean, they they packed the house pretty early, right? Like they did it strategically. They put some of those St. Louis fighters early in the night, so got the crowd out. And yeah, man, like this is the stuff we miss. It just enhances the atmosphere in so many different ways. Um, the fighters, like, well, we'll get into Dana's comments after, but we yeah. posted, you know, some social stuff about those comments about doing less shows in the apex and just go look through the comments. There's multiple fighters in there. That's like, it's tough fighting in the apex, like blah, blah, blah. You see who liked it. How many of the fighters like those comments? Like you can see, it's not just us. It's not just the fans. The fighters want to be out of there too. And they appreciate these moments so much more. So yeah, I mean, we can get into the rest of it now, but that's just kind of my thoughts on the question there and the difference in atmosphere. Guys, I, I was just thinking, imagine if Joaquin Buckley would have hit that spinning knockout of the year, knockout of the history of the UFC in St. Louis, just any crowd, but specifically St. Louis, like he would be just a superstar right now, right? The apex kind of robbed them of him becoming a, a bigger deal. But I want to go to Dan real quick because I know he's a, he's a bit of a fight nerd. So I, I feel like you like, there, there's something about the apex that you like, right? Is there something that, that we're missing here that can be appreciated about the silence? I don't know, some listening to the corners is there something that you like about it uh no i i've, I've kind of grown sick of it too to be honest um yeah. i don't feel like we get the honest performances because like when before when i would have to like break down fights i would not just because I, I don't watch tough and i don't want to watch tough but it really was no value because you're in a you're in a quiet environment you know the, the the tough fights you don't have your coaches or whatever at least you have your coaches here oh and in the apex you have your family members for one fight could you imagine rebovich's family like being there for the ko and then having to be escorted outside while rebovich waits to get you know to get a, a what do you call this by not getting a bonus imagine that kind of a night in the apex huh oh boy um but also it's really annoying because you know if you want to talk about some of the referee mishaps or the judge mishaps i you know we talk about the fighters, right? We're like, oh, how is it compared to fighting in the apex compared to not? Like, and there's all these different performance differences. Some fighters like it, some don't, some do better, some do worse. Well, guess who else are human beings who are performing, guys? The judges and the refs. And I feel like even we're seeing with veteran refs and veteran judges, they are boy, are they off their games at these live shows? We are seeing way more fumbles at these live shows. Mm. If you guys have been paying attention, uh, whether it's like non stoppages and this and that, maybe a benefit of the apex is. They're less clouded by the crowd. They can get a better eye on the action. I, I don't know what that is from perspective. They would have to answer that. But I have noticed they've been performing poor. That being said, give me the live shows, man. They're way better, way better for the crowd, way better for the fighters. It's way better for everybody involved. Stop being cheap. You're certainly charging enough of a gate to justify these UFC. So if these poor family members are going to have to buy inflated tickets, regardless if it's the apex, if they're going to have to travel regardless, how about they at least get to stay in their seat for the whole time? A feature that the apex doesn't even allow for the fighters, family members. I don't know. Hmm. UFC St. Louis broke the record for the most profitable or the biggest gate as far as the fight night goes. So there's that too, as, as, as you mentioned. Guys, let's go real quick to a Dana White clip because not only did we pick this up, but also the media members in attendance as well as Dana White. And he had something to say about this. When you think about how we built this business, it was taking it out of, you know, the, the big markets. Like when we first got into the fight business, everybody just went to Vegas, Atlantic City, Sometimes New York, sometimes L.A. That, that's the only place they really had fights, unless you had a, a local kid that would fight in some, you know. We, we, we built this business taking this thing to, to every city all over the world. And, you know, as we start to get our, our shit together, I will call it, and start to move about and start to, you know, go to these different cities like we used to, it, 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 the whole sport just goes to another level. Matt, cap or no cap? I mean, <laughs> I mean, at this point, it's kind of it's got to be cap, right? Because he's been saying this for years, but uh, it's it's tough, right? Because 
if you look at it from a business side of things, like for the UFC, it makes sense to keep running Apex shows because it's a lot easier lift on their end. But also, I think there's a point of diminishing returns, and I think we've kind of hit that as well because you've built your brand of the UFC of having these traveling events, so going to city to city, country to country, across the globe, crowd pans and like, you know, sea of people and like cheering for all these big fights and everything. That's the kind of stuff that makes you say, I want to go buy a ticket and be a part of that environment. Not a part of, you know, being at the apex where there's 12 people clapping and there's zero reaction to post-fight interviews when guys are trying to be energetic and they're like, give me a hell yeah. And it's just like crickets, you know, sort of things. It's like, you got to have the excitement of the crowd, just even reacting to little things that you really don't necessarily think of. Like when they show mm -hmm. replays between rounds, you can hear yeah. the crowd reacting to that, right? Stuff like that gets missed at the apex. I mean, the only the only redeeming quality for me on the apex for certain matchups is having the smaller cage because that benefits the fight, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But everything Good else, you got to be there for the crowd, man. That's what helps build stars. When you have these performances in front of crowds, the crowd gets excited about the finish, like like uh, Esteban Rivovich, right? And then you get on the mic and you deliver an emphatic promo. People are going to remember that. People are going to remember the crowd reaction. It's going to play better in future promo packages for mm -hmm. that fighter. That builds a star. And I know the UFC necessarily wants doesn't necessarily want to build stars up too big, right? Because it's all about the three letters above everybody else. But at the same time, this is how you build fighters up to build bigger gates for the future, to get the, that next level of stardom. You have to be in front of crowds. You can't do this in the apex anymore. you got to get out. Yeah. And I feel like I've, I agree with you, Matt. I feel like I've been hearing Dana White say this for so many years now since, you know, the pandemic. We got to get out. We got to get out. We got to get out. Yet here we are, you know, 2024, 16 shows in and half of them have been at the UFC Apex. But, Mike, let me go to you and ask you this. Uh, one thing saying, OK, yeah, we got to get out there. We will. But another thing is, can they? I don't want to sound disrespectful. And I always hate framing these questions because sometimes it, it sounds like we're taking a shot at the fighters. But let's be honest, the quality of a lot of these Apex cards have not been the best, right? If you're going to go to any city, you got to sell tickets, the arenas, right? You, they cost money. Um, do you feel like they can go to, uh, take, they can't take these Apex shows out on the road? Yeah, that's an interesting question for sure, because roster depth is definitely a challenge for them right now. Um but it's always kind of been this way. Like even pre pandemic, they were going on the road like every weekend and I'm sit here, like I'm inclined to sit here and be like, well, look at some of these apex cards. Like half the dudes are from contender series are tough. Three quarters of the people on the card are coming off a loss or making their debut. Like this is horrible. How do you sell this in an arena for X amount of dollars a ticket, but go back and look some of these like pre pandemic cards. Some of them were like that too. Like I remember it was in 2014. It was like a significant moment when they went to New Zealand and headlined a card with Nate Markhart versus James Tahuna. And it was the first UFC event ever where yeah. both fighters were coming off back to back losses. And that was like a meaningful moment. And now that's like routine stuff, right? To have co-main events, yeah. main events, three fight losing streaks. Like it happens a lot more now, but they're able to pull some of the stuff off because they have name fighters like they can throw Derek Lewis in a main event off three straight losses and a lot of people don't blink an eye if it's like in the apex I think if you strategically do it you can find cities that will sell at these venues places that are desperate for sports content go to a South Carolina or a Nebraska or something like that that doesn't have like a big pro sports team and they can make this happen it's just about the proper card construction but I do think the demand is out there for them mm -hmm. and they can pull this off um, it's just a matter of you know building it the right way and getting the right main events but they've been through all this before they've done it I think it can be done and I hope more people get the live event opportunity because I will say this so many times. One of the things that Dana White is absolutely correct on is if you are like a fringe fan getting more into it and you've never been to a live UFC event, once you go, it changes the game for you. You become a full blown addict, hardcore fan. And I would like to see more people globally get that opportunity to see this live because that helps build the sport up too. But I won't say Apex is completely useless. It has its values, obviously tough contender series should be be there that makes sense if you want to throw one card a month or one card every six weeks there to put maybe the lowest of the low level people you owe fights to 
um, contractually. I'm okay with that, but right now I would definitely would like to see more shows on the road for all the reasons that being said in this segment. Um, but I do know that there's a value for the apex. I would just like to see them use it in a more productive way, I guess. Yeah. Dan, you, you want to say something? Yeah, I think Mike nailed it when he said card construction. I do believe they can do it. They have the roster depth. Unfortunately, TKO, who is also the one pushing for them to go back on the road, I'm assuming, because Dana White's been doing the same song and dance. It's like the, you know, uh, I think you should leave me. But we got to find the guy who did this. And that's what essentially he's doing up there. Uh, but card construction, they can do it. It's card construction. I know I complain about it, guys. And we saw how, how roaring the prelims are because they put all the good fights on there. They actually might have to try. And you see that, that they do try differently, but even better as far as like, again, oh, Dan's being a hipster and annoying. And he keeps complaining about 185 to heavyweight opening the main card. Well, look what happened on the heavyweight main opener. Oh, uh, big guys, big low level heavyweight slot fest went to decision and killed Shittiest the momentum fight that of the we night beautifully bonus. had. Yeah, then we had – it's such a crucial spot. Joe Silva put 145 and 155 99.99999% of the time for a reason. Say what you will about that little diminutive monster. He knew how to structure a card, goddammit. Bring Joe Silva back. Go ahead, flame me, matchmakers. Stop your big man and fast. Give us some 145 and 155 because when we bring back on the road, we're going to have less of an opportunity to give people like Lerone Murphy or Steve Ursig like actual five round fights before they get to these big fights, you know? Um, but Hey, at least we can feature them on the main card. Maybe actually feature meaningful fights, meaningful fighters who are actually in good divisions in good matchups. I don't know. Maybe get those off the prelims. Huh? No, dog. we need more there's... Marcin Tibera main events. I will yeah, say there's no, one good need. thing about uh, getting, you know, random heavyweight matchups to headline Apex shows. Uh, Dan Tom's rants. I mean, just spectacular stuff here from Dan. So th there is that plus.